This is a revision video for the A-level chemistry topic of Hess's law calculations, particularly focusing on calculations that use enthalpy of combustion data. If you haven't already watched the video about enthalpy of formation calculations, it might be worth looking at that one before this one. Hess's law tells us that the overall enthalpy change or heat energy change for a reaction is independent of the route taken. So that means that where it isn't possible to measure an enthalpy change directly, we can calculate what it should be by using the values for other enthalpy changes that we do know about. Imagine I wanted to work out experimentally what the standard enthalpy of formation for carbon monoxide is. This is basically impossible to do in the lab because there's no way that I can make sure that all of the carbon is incompletely oxidised. I'm going to end up with some carbon atoms being fully oxidised to make carbon dioxide or some of them left behind and not oxidised at all. But what I can do instead is to use a Hess's cycle to predict what the size of this standard enthalpy of formation will be. Because I can take some carbon and fully combust that to make carbon dioxide and I can also take some carbon monoxide and fully oxidise that. And then I can use this Hess's cycle to calculate what the standard enthalpy of formation would be. You'll often find in energetics that we're referring to standard enthalpies, and this standard refers to the standard conditions. So when we're thinking about standard enthalpy of formation, we have to be forming one mole of a compound. In order to be considered an enthalpy change, a heat energy change must happen at constant pressure. And when we're saying standard enthalpy, that should be the standard atmospheric pressure of 100 kilopascals. It also needs to happen at a stated temperature, and if this isn't stated, we usually assume that it's 298 Kelvin. The standard enthalpy of combustion can be defined as the enthalpy change, or heat energy change at constant pressure, when one mole of a substance is completely burned in oxygen, with all reactants and products being in their standard states. As you can see from my symbol equation here, we have one mole of methane being combusted. It's being completely combusted, so we're just getting water and carbon dioxide. There isn't any carbon monoxide, and everything is in its standard state. I did mention in the previous video, but just in case you haven't seen that, don't worry about whether you're seeing a textbook write delta HC or delta CH. They do mean the same thing. So now we're going to look at a few different styles of question which ask us to use standard enthalpy of combustion data. The first one we're going to look at is where we're given data for standard enthalpy of formation and then asked to calculate the standard enthalpy of combustion. Depending on how charitable the exam board are feeling, you may or may not be given an equation for the standard enthalpy of combustion. So our first step may be to write one of those. We're looking at propane and remember for standard enthalpy of combustion, we must start with one mole and it must be completely combusted. So we're only going to make carbon dioxide and water. We've also been given data for standard enthalpy of formation. Now you could spend a little bit of time working out exactly which elements there are, but particularly when you start thinking about the oxygen, this can take you valuable time in an exam and you're not actually going to get any credit for it. So I usually just draw a box and write elements in it. And then I have my arrows going from the elements to the things that are being formed. Our next step is to assign values to those arrows. You'll note that I don't have an arrow pointing to oxygen because this is already in its standard state for that element. So its standard enthalpy of formation will be zero and we don't need to include it. For propane, I need to add minus 105. And then for the carbon dioxide and water, of course, I need to take into account that there's more than one mole. So we're going to have three lots of minus 394 and four lots of minus 286. Now with these cycles, one of the biggest mistakes that people make all the time is they follow them the wrong way round. Often this is a three mark question and if you go the wrong way around the cycle and get the wrong sign, you only get one mark. So when I'm trying to work out a standard enthalpy of combustion here, I'm going to make sure that I write start and end on my diagram so that I don't accidentally go the wrong way around. Now I can start working out my calculation. So based on this big blue arrow that I've drawn, you can see that I'm going the wrong way down the arrow for the standard enthalpy of formation of propane. So I need to take the negative of that number. So I'm going to start out with minus, minus 105. Then I'm going to go the right way up my two arrows representing carbon dioxide and water. So those numbers I don't need to reverse, I just use them as they are. So I'm adding on three lots of minus 394 and four lots of minus 286. 
and if I add all of those up together, I come out with a final answer of minus 2,221 kilojoules per mole. Our next type of question is going to use a very similar cycle, but flipped around. So instead, we're going to be given the standard enthalpy of combustion and asked to calculate the standard enthalpy of formation. We'll start out with quite a simple reaction, the one that we used in the introduction. So we're trying to work out what the standard enthalpy of formation for carbon monoxide is. So my first step is that I'm going to write a symbol equation that represents that. Now I need to think about my combustion enthalpies. Now, in this instance, it's pretty obvious what's going to be made, but there isn't any problem if you just want to write oxides instead. So here we're going to make carbon dioxide and I can add arrows to show that each of these things is being combusted. Now, strictly speaking, these aren't proper chemical equations because I should be adding more oxygen in. But it doesn't really matter because the cycle is just to help me to do the maths. So now I can add some numbers in here. When I combust carbon, that has a value of minus 393. Combusting oxygen obviously doesn't have a value because it's just oxygen. And then the carbon monoxide gives me minus 283. Just as I did in the previous example, I'm going to write start and end on my cycle and draw an arrow that connects them to make sure that I definitely go the right way around my cycle. So now following this, I can see that I'm going the right way along my carbon arrow, so that's minus 393. And then I'm going the wrong way up my carbon monoxide arrow. So we're going to have minus, minus 283. And that gives me an overall value for the standard enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide of minus 110 kilojoules per mole. Now, that's quite a kind question because my Hesse cycle is just a triangle where each side is one arrow and one arrow only, and there's only one mole of anything. So let's look at how we can make this a little bit more tricky. So in this next question, we're going to be asked to work out the standard enthalpy of formation of propanol, and we've been given the combustion data for propanol itself and also for carbon and hydrogen. I started out by writing out my equation for the standard enthalpy of combustion of propanol. Again, we need to make sure that we only have one mole of propanol, that everything is being completely combusted and that everything is in its standard states. I can finish off my cycle by adding the elements at the bottom and then I have a green arrow which represents the formation of propanol and a red arrow which represents the combustion of the carbon and the hydrogen. Now the truth is that in an exam situation I wouldn't write this out longhand because the oxygen in particular is going to take me a few seconds to figure out exactly how much oxygen I need and that's time that I don't have to spare. So what I personally tend to do is have a box that says elements and a box that says oxides and that's really all I need to be able to build my Hesse cycle and that then means that I can tell myself I'm adding some oxygen and I don't need to worry about exactly how much it is. But for now, we'll stick with the full cycle. And you can see that I've already split up my single red arrow for combustion into separate arrows for the combustion of the carbon and the combustion of the water. So now I need to start adding some numbers to these arrows. The combustion of carbon has a value of minus 393. And since there are three moles of carbon being combusted, I need to multiply that value by three. You'll note that this is the same value that we used earlier for the formation of carbon dioxide because it's the same thing. Likewise, we're going to need four lots of minus 286 because there are four moles of water being formed. And then finally, we can add in our value for the combustion of propanol, which is minus 2021. As always, I'm going to write start and end so that I don't get mixed up and go the wrong way around my cycle. So based on this new arrow that I've drawn, I can see that I'm going the correct way up my two combustion arrows. So they just stay as they are. And then I'm going to go the wrong way along my combustion of propanol arrow at the top. So that needs reversing. So we have minus minus 2021. When I add up all of those values, I get a standard enthalpy of formation for propanol of minus 302. You could also be asked to work out the overall enthalpy for a reaction. This is really what we were doing with the carbon monoxide question earlier. It's just that in that particular example, the reaction was a formation reaction. So in this reaction, we have carbon reacting with hydrogen to make ethane. For this type of question, they are going to have to give me a symbol equation because I can't possibly work out the enthalpy change for a reaction if I don't know what that reaction is. I'm going to need one arrow that goes from each species to its oxides. And as I said previously, I'm not going to spend a lot of time working out what those oxides are. I'm just going to have a box that says oxides. So based on that, I can add in two lots of minus 393 for the carbon three lots of minus 286 for the hydrogen, 
and one lot of minus 1561, my ethane. I'm trying to work out what the overall reaction is. So again, I add my start, end, and link them up with an arrow. And then I can see that I'm going the right way along my first two arrows and the wrong way up my final arrow. So that gets reversed, giving me a final value of minus 83. Finally, we've got two types of questions that use bond enthalpy data. For this first type of question, I'm given a load of bond enthalpy data and asked to work out an overall value for the standard enthalpy of combustion of propene. Now really, this is just a regular bond enthalpy question where I'm working out delta H, and the only twist is, do I know what the standard enthalpy of combustion of propene means? Well, yes, I do. So I can write that equation. And really, from this point, you don't need a Hess's cycle for this kind of question. But since we're doing them, we may as well. So for this one, the third point of my triangle would be the atoms that are left over after we break every single bond in these molecules. So I know that my overall delta H value will be bonds broken, take away bonds made. So I can add up all of the bonds that are in my reactants and all of the bonds that are in my products. And if I take the bonds that have been made away from the bonds that have been broken, I get a value of minus 1572 kilojoules per mole. Finally, we could be given some of the bond enthalpy data along with the delta H value for the standard enthalpy of combustion and asked to work out the value of a missing bond enthalpy. I will practice this last bit by saying I could only find one example of this type of question and the numbers in it aren't quite right because for the original reaction the water was as a gas which obviously isn't a standard enthalpy but I think this is still a useful process to go through because there is nothing to stop the exam board from asking you this type of question in the future. In this question we're going to look at the standard enthalpy of combustion for propanol and I do apologise that number is not actually minus 1893 but it is the number from the question because in the question they had water as a gas. So we're just going to roll with it for now. So we've been given that value for standard enthalpy of combustion and also we've been given most of the bond enthalpy data but what we haven't been given is the value of a carbon-carbon bond so that's what we're trying to work out. As previously you don't have to draw a Hess's cycle but it might just help you out a little bit. So we have all of the bonds dissociating to leave us with nothing but atoms. And so when we say that the delta HC value is bonds broken, take away bonds made, really what we mean is we're going to do the value of the left-hand arrow, because that one we're going to follow in the right direction, take away the value of the right-hand arrows, because we're going the wrong way up them. So if I work out all of the bonds that are on the left-hand side of my equation, and I use 2x to represent those two carbon-carbon bonds, and then I look at all the bonds that are on the right-hand side of my equation. I'm left with 5939 plus 2x for those two carbon-carbon bonds. Take away 8534 must be equal to minus 1893, my standard enthalpy of combustion. Now, if I cancel out those two values, I then get 2x take 2595 is still equal to that standard enthalpy of combustion. And if I bring that 2595 over onto the right-hand side, I see that 2x is 702 and 1x, the value of a carbon-carbon bond, must be 351 kilojoules per mole. Thank you very much for watching and well done for surviving all of those different types of Hesse cycle question. The key thing with these cycles is just to practice, practice, practice. If you found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe below for more A-level chemistry videos coming soon.